squids I am back this time on the gold wing it has been boiling it's a hundred something degrees but if you open up your visor you get bombarded with like super hot super hot wind in your face I've only experienced that once in Texas and in Europe too like in Portugal like in some parts it gets so hot is the bike is capable of doing 70 80 miles per hour no problem but the issue is it feels like a, especially now without the fairing it just feels like it's too much happening so I'm at 45 I'm at uh, 50 and I'm going to move to 55. That's really like the sweet spot for this bike. It seems to like cruising at 55. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful bike. The other old bikes I had were a Honda Ascot and the Shadow 750. And I like this much more. The engine is much more interesting in my opinion. The Ascot was cool, V-twin, 500cc, shaft driven, but the way you sat on it, it was a weird, that was like the weirdest position for a bike. I liked it, it was quirky. And of course, much lighter than this. 16 miles per hour, and it's about 4,000 RPMs. I don't know if the tack is reliable anymore. So what is it like to ride a 1981 Honda Goldwing? Well, let's find out. And today, Sunday noon, doesn't seem to have a lot of traffic. Now this bike in the middle of summer, it doesn't feel that good. And that's because this engine gets hot. It gets really hot. Also, one thing to keep in mind is that your feet are right at the cylinder. So your feet are going to be nice and toasty. It's a beautiful thing in the winter, but not so much when it's 100 degrees out, like today. And also, when the fan kicks in, if I turn on the fan, you get way more heat. You get heat all over your legs, your thighs, and your cylinders stick out on the outside. This is liquid cool. But it's a big bike. It's an 11cc bike. But also, the interesting thing is that these bikes are heavy, and on paper, they seem lighter than the new Gold Wings, but the new Gold Wings feel much more agile than this. And also, the flat bars that I put, they don't really help the handling too much at low speed. They actually make it a little bit harder, because they put you in a kind of like sporty position. You're kind of like leaned over the front of it. It's a nice position. I find it comfortable. But it doesn't help the handling at low speeds. Don't you hate it when there's like a car that just refuses to leave your side? By the way, that's the danger thing. You don't want to be next to a car. The car will eventually forget that you're there or want to make a lane change feels heavy, but it also feels solid, like nothing is going to topple it. It's got a 19 inch front wheel and it's 17 rear, kind of like what a big ABD bike has. This particular bike has got something very technologically advanced for the age, and that's tubeless tires. And at first I was thinking about getting the GL1000, because that is the bike that was making from Goldway, from Honda the first gold wave that came into the scene, I believe, in 1977. But when you find out that it's got tubes and it's such a big bike, I was like, oh man, I really hate tubes on bikes. I know my Africa Twin, my CRF, they have tubes, but it doesn't make that very handy. If you ever get a, a flat on a tubeless tire, if you can get a can of fix a flat, a lot of times that will fix it. And it's easy to plug one. 
who was the first tubeless on the Goldwing. Goldwings have definitely become more modern, they have compressors for the tires, they have this and that. But this one, it's still kind of basic. It's got a lot of amenities of what was new in the 1980s like to the tires, the gas tanks underneath the seat. It's got saddle cases. It had an interstate bearing that I removed. It had a radio. It had a CV. And no, it's not a fast bike by modern standards. A 500cc bike will be able to beat this bike. But you don't get a 1981 Goldwing for racing. This bike will do fairly well in twisties because the center weight, but it is kind of like a fork, forky bike to ride around. It requires a lot more skill because it's uh, in low speeds. This doesn't handle like a traditional Goldwing. Goldwings were notoriously or are notoriously easy to handle. So, what are some of the downsides of owning a old Goldwing? Well, I guess it's a parts thing most of the time. It's not like you can just get anything for them. To me, the coolest thing about this bike is really the engine. The flat four engine that it uses is silky smooth. I used to be one of these guys that would make fun of Goldwing riders. It's like, why you you want a couch? And then you ride the Goldwing and you go, oh, wait a minute. This is not the bike that I thought it was. There's a reason Goldwing riders keep them for their entire lives. I mean, these guys will stack 100,000 miles on Goldwings. For the temperature, you don't see a lot of motorcycle riders around, or at least not commuting. They're probably out in the mountains riding. Oh boy, look at this. By the way, this bike hates this sort of traffic. It's a heavy bike, it is a hot bike, and it does tend to get hot. So hopefully, it's gonna start to move soon. You know, I'm told that's what Porsches sound like. So if they do, I might have to buy one one day. I think what I like about this bike and bikes in general is that you know if you wanted a Porsche that's limiting that's a limited uh, purchase by somebody that makes a lot of money but a bike including like a high-end Ducati most people can afford, afford that if they really want to and in this case a bike like a gold ring like this is $700 800 900 1000 1500 2000 and that's a lot of bike for the money. Even with the fan, it doesn't really warm up that much. That's something I'm always a little bit concerned about because I definitely don't want the engine to overheat. In bumper to bumper traffic, I would hate this bike. <laughs> it's just so, so difficult. It's just not a good when you get on a scooter, for example, that thing feels effortless to ride in bumper to bumper traffic. You can dodge cars, you can move around. This one feels like it's a battleship coming through. With these handlebars, it does feel like it's some sort of ADD bike that you kind of lean forward a bit. Feel the girth and the mass of this bike when you're riding. Oh, here comes the Popo. Something must be happening. State Trooper. Whenever there's a state trooper with lights on like this, there's always an accident. And I've been seeing a lot of crazy stuff happening. Lots of people running red lights intentionally. I keep saying that to people. It's a thing that's happening. I also have to say that the range of the tank is not that good. It's like 130 miles, which is the same as my Honda PCX. 
Yeah, it's like a battleship going into corners too. And also the soft suspension doesn't really help. I think in back roads it's a little bit more predictable because you're not going as fast, but the ramps, they're deceiving because they look smooth and then they have all of these bumps from cars and trucks. Get on it, you ride a few back roads, you show the bike around and you take some more back roads home. That's really what this bike has been relegated to. Doing touring on it, I think it would be awesome to do a long ride on this Goldwing. It really is a fantastic, fantastic bike for such a low price. That's the end of the ride for today. Squids, I hope you enjoy it. This Goldwing is hanging on. And that's what it's like to ride this thing on the highway. Hope you enjoy it. Hit like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.